joy, I've got the joy, I've got the joy. It's the joy of the love. It's the joy of the love. I've got the joy, I've got the joy, I've got the joy. It's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy, I've got the joy, I've got the joy. I've got the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy, I've got the joy, I've got the joy. Come on, sing it out. It's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy, I've got the joy, I've got the joy. We're declaring. It's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord. Sing 
Oh, how we worship you this morning. Lord, we are so grateful for who you are in us, who you are through us. Lord, we thank you for your presence just even amongst us in this room. Lord, we know that you dwell in us permanently, but then also just your tangible presence as well. Father, we're so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's nothing better than just using those words, thank you. Come on, can we just from our hearts this morning, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I'm saved. Thank you, I've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you all the honor. It belongs to you. Father, even right now as our first time together in this place, Jesus, we just want to dedicate and announce that this belongs to you. This building from wall to wall, your name be lifted up. Jesus, that your presence fills every area. We love you, Lord. You are our heart's desire, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, worship team. Thank you all so much. Church family, you may be seated. It is so good to see you all. In the risers. How's everybody in the risers? Come on, man. What a sweet spot that is. I'm, I'm not envious of you right now, but that's where I would sit if I could, too. That's a, some good sound up there. And, man, we're just so grateful. Look what Jesus has done. And uh, what we're going to do is we want to take some time just to thank and just over these past five months, there's a lot of things that have happened. I, I don't know if anybody was in this building five months ago, but it didn't look like this. And so we just want to take a few minutes just to showcase that a little bit and then just take a time to celebrate all that God has done. So I'll turn your attention to the screen.
to great adventure. Welcome to the future. Man, oh man. I tell you, it's amazing what has taken place over these last five months, and we're just so thankful. I'm going to call up Pastor Julian uh, just to come up here as well. Just to, We want to hit a couple of facts, give some of those things out to you, just so you can get a little bit of an idea of what took place. Oh, thanks. It's sharing my mic. Well, you know, um, I almost started crying during that video. Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, maybe for some, maybe a lot of emotion today. And it's really great emotion because we are so excited for what the Lord has done in and through so many lives in this church. Amen. And uh, so we're going to throw a slide up here right away. And uh, this is a slide, as you're going to see right in about two seconds. There it is. Total hours given. And so the last time I shared this was about halfway through the project and some of you might have thought it was funny when I kind of was like blown away by by what happened and what is happening and I fell to the ground and uh, it was funny maybe for some then it was funny for me I had a good time with that but then today I'm not gonna just fall over again because sometimes doing a joke twice just doesn't work the second time but what I wanted to highlight is July 5th to November 18th so yesterday Yesterday, we were still just working away, making it work for today. So 6,597 hours of people giving and serving to make this happen today. And then that is equivalent, just, yeah, that's equivalent to 824.98 hour days, which is just over 27 months which equals 2.27 years of work accomplished in 119 days. Like that is just absolutely mind-boggling to think that that, that, is, that is time just sewn into saying, yes, Lord, we're just here to build and to be a part of your kingdom. Amen? So it, it is just so amazing. And so I just want to share this scripture with you, and then we're going to just highlight um, all of the different areas of where people have served. So Mark 12, 30, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you know, I, I have seen some very passionate, loving, like strong, hardworking, mindful, intelligent, bright people that have said, this is all for your glory. That is what I have observed and what I have seen over the last 119 days. And so, you know, um, as we went through the list, thank you, Terry, and I know Muriel as well, that have, that have taken time to check people in and check people out and keep track of all of that. Um, you know, it might be a little bit off, but about 115 individuals that were able to give of their time. And I know some of you out here today are like, I just, I wasn't able to give time. That's okay. There will be another time for you. Or maybe, you know, maybe I forgot someone. That's why I'm not going to say any names today. But if I name off a bunch of areas and you're like, well, I did this. It was not intended to offend you. Um, but if you want, come and see me afterwards. I'll get you a Tim Hortons gift card. Is that cool? Just in case. Just want to cover it all right now, right up front. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask that you save your applause to the end. Okay, but I'm going to start naming off a whole bunch of different areas of work that's been accomplished. And as that happens, I would like you to stand. And we recognize there's going to be a lot of crossover. Okay, so here we go. So the first one, demo. Okay, so demo, stand up. Demo. Anybody that did demo, stand up. Anybody that did landscaping, stand up. Uh, cutting and pouring concrete, framing and carpentry, fr uh, drywall, mudding, taping, sanding, painting, mechanical and HVAC, electrical, plumbing, ceiling tile, finishing carpentry, all flooring, wall and tile, install of bathroom partitions. That is helpful, right? Installing of bathroom partitions. Then we got... Um, where am I, where am I, where am I? Uh, install, oh yeah, providing meals, baking, snacks, goodies, etc. Tech and audio, checking people in and out, cleaning, moving, 
more cleaning, then some more moving, and then a bit more cleaning, and then building IKEA furniture, and then those that babysat for families that were here working. And then how about all those spouses that gratefully shared their husband or wife to the project? And then we have all the trades and the companies that donated time, material, resources, and gave back financially. Look at all these people that are standing. Let's applaud every single one of you this morning. This is just so beautiful to see you may be seated. We are just so, so thankful. Every single, um, yeah, as, as Impact Life Church staff, we are so thankful for everybody that participated in one way or another. We are standing on this stage today because of you, and we're so thankful what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. Well, I'll pass over the mic to Pastor Joel. Amen. Well, there were a couple more individuals who really helped make this happen because if volunteers showed up and they didn't know what to do, well, we couldn't have made this happen. And that was our three project coordinators and their two wonderful assistants. So we're going to call up, if you were a project coordinator, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Hampson, and Mr. Hikins, if you guys can come on up to the stage and Jillian and Ingrid, come on up, give them a hand as they come. was no way to make this incredible building look and feel the way it did without project coordinators who gave their time, without these two women who gave of their time and just put their gifting into this church. I'm so thankful that you guys embody you belong here. Mm -hmm. You embody impacting generations for Jesus. To you guys, this was not just making a building. You were making a house for the Lord. And we could not be more grateful. And all of the volunteers who worked under you could not be more grateful. So we want to honor you this morning. Yes, we do. And just, uh, uh, we removed your beds from the back. So now you don't have to, you can, <laughs> you have your wives and husbands back right there. So we just, again, what, what Pastor Jamie was saying, we're so thankful. This is a, a beautiful net so that people can come and go, look at what God has done. And so we just want to say from the depths of our heart, I know that won't even be enough to say, but thank you, thank you, thank you for making this place home for us again. So can we just give them one more great big hand as we do that? Beautiful. Man, oh man. Aren't you so thankful? I sometimes just want to, I just want to look at you. I don't know if I really want to do anything else. <laughs> oh man, the stage is higher up, so don't rip your pants, Joel. Okay. Oh man, we are so glad, man. Aren't, I just, I love looking around. Like, it looks so cool. And you know what? Um, we have another location. We're a multi-site. Now, it's right now, it's, it's going to be used. For some of you who've had a couple of questions, that right now is called our Impact Center. And we're still holding. We got Freedom Session there Monday nights. Uh, we got youth that's taking place there Wednesdays. And I mean, all throughout the week, it is used for kids, for seniors, big meeting on Thursdays. It's just amazing to see what God is doing and that he's stewarded us with two buildings. And uh, so we don't take that lightly. Uh, we want to be able to impact generations for Jesus everywhere that we go. So this morning, uh, let's get into a few things today. Wyatt, thank you so much. It just doesn't sound so good with music in the background. It's like... My voice sounds so nice, but thank you, man. Thank you very much. You know, for those of you that are visiting, we're so glad that you're here. You kind of checked it out. Maybe you saw a parking lot. I heard the parking lot's full already. Awesome. I thought that we would, you know, take us at least two months to enjoy at least some parking spaces, but alas, here you are. So thank you for finding a parking spot. I know there's some street stuff, and we'll just take over that Lions Plaza as well. Might as well. Actually, my kid asked me, uh, Treehouse, any, any parents go to Treehouse that's in that little... Yeah, grandparents, you know, treehouse right there. Uh, my, my, uh, young, my daughter asked me, can we buy that? <laughs> hey, girl, you got vision. Let's go. Let's buy treehouse. <laughs> 
Oh, man, but again, we just want to thank you for coming and being here to celebrate with us. And uh, we're going to be having a kind of a grand opening probably in the new year. Uh, and we'll kind of let a date settled on that. We were just getting ready for this day to launch, and so we're so glad to do that. Uh, you know, I'm going to just share a few things with you from my heart as we launch into this. And, uh, you know, uh, there was a couple words that were given to us as a church family, and I'm not going to read them to you today. But one of the words that really highlighted was this is a fresh and a new start. And I'm, again, so thankful because it is. I don't know if you ever took a whiff this morning. Anybody took a, took a deep breath? What does it smell like to you? Carpet. Come on. It is a fresh and new carpet. It smells new. Everything is brand new. And I think for us, even as a spiritual, from a spiritual perspective, it is a fresh and a new start. And I want to, you know, the question that we've been asking the Lord, I know I've been asking the Lord for us as a church family is, Lord, what are you desiring to build in us so that you can work through us? And I mean, we've told the Lord, this is your church. And there was a couple, a couple years back, I remember hearing this word and it struck a chord in me. The Lord said this to this, this individual that was ministering at the time. The Lord said to me, he said, I want my church back. And that just leapt up on the inside of me, meaning this is that, Lord, we've just, not that we're throwing away our, our time. We're, we're very respectful of people's time. But at the same time, the most important person in this room is Jesus. And so we want to give him the space and the access that he wants to do in order to do what he does in people's lives. And so, again, this is not to say what other churches do. I'm not interested in that. We're talking about the house that Jesus told us to build and the interest and the vision that he gave us to impact generations for Jesus. We are just so sold out to his plan. We're sold out to him. And we want to make sure that he's able to do what he needs to do through this region and in our province and nation. Amen? Okay. So, again, now the assignment. And before I go on a little forward, I just want to say thank you to, you know, the tech guys this morning. They were sweating bullets to make sure everything was working. Uh, thank you, guys. And even with all this stuff, we're, we're getting our hands on it. So thank you for extending grace to us. I mean, things may go, well, why did they do that? Well, we're figuring it out. So thank you for your patience. And they go, oh, I'm cold in the room. Hey, we're figuring it out. There's a few buttons that we're still learning to press. So we do appreciate your kindness and grace towards us. Uh, but again, going back to this now, just for those of you that may have been here for 29 years, or maybe you're just kind of going, hey, I, this is new, this is my first time here, I really felt in my heart again to share with you the assignment that the Lord has given this church family, and at the same time, what you can expect being planted in Impact Life Church. Is that okay with you this morning? You know, in Psalm 92, it talks about those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. So the goal, again, is not just a church hop. That's not a healthy place to be. You want to get planted in a place because when you get planted, you can grow and also take part of what the God is doing in the anointing that is on the house. And so I know that for myself, I'm planted here, not because I'm the pastor. You say, well, you have to be here. I don't have to. I could just sleep in. I get to be here. This is a choice. This is where the Lord has planted me as well. And so I want to just share a few things with you about what you can expect. And of course, getting involved, serving on a team. I know for me, this is a place that I get to serve the Lord. And I know it'll be the same place for you. But there's three things that I want you guys to realize and for us as a church family to grasp. Number one is this, what you can expect is that the, you can expect to grow and understand the culture of heaven. Say with me, the culture of heaven. What is the culture of heaven? How did you all know that? Oh, it's on the giant screen, okay. But this love for one another, understanding the culture, it's love for one another, not just knowing the love of God or, you know, it's kind of a head knowledge. It actually used to be experienced regularly. Secondly now also, it's the lifestyle of heaven. What is the lifestyle of heaven? It's that I'm experiencing the grace of God by faith. Grace has already provided everything you will ever need in this life. Did you know that? Talking about your healing, it's already been provided for by grace. Talking about your blessing, it's already been provided by grace. Talking about the joy of the Lord that we sang this morning, guess what? It's been provided by grace. The comfort that you need no matter what you go through, guess what? It came by grace. Because grace isn't just a topic, it is a man. And his name is Jesus. So what are we here for? To understand and grow in the lifestyle of heaven, which again, experiencing the grace of God by faith. So grace is God's handle on you, and faith is our handle on God and what he's done for us. And then thirdly, is the flow of heaven. What's the flow of heaven? To learn to be led by 
the Spirit of God. So rather than Google calling the shots, rather than letting my emotions call the shots, letting my bank account call the shots, let how I feel call the shots, I'm actually here to learn as a believer, we're all called to be led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8.14 says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. Now, sons of God is actually one that is mature, right? A mature son or daughter of the Most High God. We don't have to be led by what goes on out there. We actually can be led on the inside by the Holy Spirit himself. Because where is he? He's right here. Come on, just slap your belly, that six-pack or whatever, that one-pack, whatever, whatever's hanging out there right now, just slap her. If it wiggles a little bit, don't worry, we'll dance a little bit, we'll, we'll wiggle it off. <laughs> but to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, how do we do these things? And I just very simple, you know, I, I, I was reading this a while ago, and these three, three words, Colossians 1.28, I don't have that on the screen, but Colossians 1.28 says, Him we preach. Who do we preach? Jesus. The Message Bible says it like this, that the substance of our message is Christ. He is the very reason. So when you come, you're not going to hear our opinion. You're not going to hear the high thought of the day. You're not going to hear what the politicians think. We're going to go to what the Word of God has to say because we're interested in what Jesus is saying and doing in these last days. So the same reason why you go to Sobeys and you get your groceries, the same reason why you go to Tim Hortons and get your triple-triple, your double-double, or your whatever it is, the same way the church ought to be about grace and truth. So when you walk into the place, it should feel different than Canadian Tire. Anybody thankful for that this morning? Any men in the house thankful that it's not Canadian Tire? All right, I love Canadian Tire. Okay, well, me too. But grace and truth should be coming from the platform. And really what we're talking about is we are coming to this place where we are so in love with Jesus, we actually want to be led by him. You know, it's different to say, I like Jesus. And then it's a whole different ball game to say, I actually want Jesus to be the Lord of my life and start leading my life. And that's what we're here for, is to really catch the heart of what the Father wants to do so that when we catch his heart, we're able now to fulfill and do what he's called and asked us to do. And that's what we, again, as a church family are called to. So if, again, if you're, you're visiting, this is what you're part of. So if you're wondering, I'm going to drink the Kool-Aid till I know what's going on. This is what's going on. We're a people that are in love with Jesus, and we're allowing him to call the shots because he's coming soon. And what we're doing is we're just making room for him to go. We're making room for people to hear the good news of the gospel. We're making room for people to experience the fullness of salvation. There's so much more than maybe what you're dabbing in right now. You may have touched or experienced a few different things. There is so much more for in this life that Jesus has purchased that you may not be experiencing. And that's why we as a church exist, is to bring that to fruition. So it's not just head knowledge. Again, some Christians are 300 pounds overweight scripturally wise. They know scriptures, they know scriptures, they know scriptures. But your knowledge of God does do you no good unless you know him. Because Jesus said that to the Pharisees. He said, everything I'm talking about points to the Pharisees, the Pharisees he's talking. Everything that you read back and you memorized the first five books of the Old Testament, they point to me. So sometimes we can miss the whole picture because we're so caught up in our tradition. We're so caught up in what, uh, this is how I was taught. This is what I think. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, we got to kick it out. Right? Okay. So now once we've caught his heart, once we've caught that, we can now start flowing with him. And I love these verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 19. Oh, no, sorry. I moved too fast. Ephesians 3.21. Our goal here at Impact, Jamie read it this morning. To him be glory in the church. And in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, amen. That's the goal. So once we've caught his heart, now look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 19 it says, it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world, not even keeping record of their transgressions. How many thankful for Jesus like that? What else was he doing then? And now he has entrusted to us. Say to me, what is he entrusted to the church? This ministry of being door openers. That's my ministry. It's so that this lost, unbelieving world, I'm there to be a door opener, not a bouncer at the door to say, you better clean yourself up before you get in here. 
No, Jesus will take care of that. We open these doors wide and say, come experience the goodness and the grace of God. Because when you do, Romans 2, 4 said, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance or leads people to change the way they think about him. Because this world, I don't know if you noticed it, but the spirit of antichrist is strong, meaning everything is anti-God. Everything anti what he stands for, against who he is, against his anointing, against his ways. But not us at the church. We are (laughs) pro-Christ. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He says, so he's entrusted to us. So I don't know about you, but when something gets entrusted to me, I want to grasp and understand what it is he's wanting me to do. So I believe this with all my heart, that God has called us for such a time as this, in this place, in this building, so that we can capture the heart of God, so that we can start to now be co-laborers with him in this day and age that we live in. So he's opened to us the door of reconciliation to God. Verse 20, he goes a little bit deeper in your calling. He says, we, you, I, we are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message. Who are we? Message carriers. Wherever you and I go, what do we do? We carry a message with us. And the devil is doing everything he can to keep that message quiet, to keep you in your insecurities, to keep you in shame, guilt, and this condemnation so you don't open your mouth. But I'll tell you, the good news is that the love of God has absolutely abolished all of that in your and my life. And we're going to get to that a little bit. But this is the message that we carry. What is the message? Well, it's the gospel, but it's also your testimony. What has Jesus done in your life? What has God done in your life that somebody needs to hear? Okay. We carry the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them through our lips. So when you're sharing your testimony, know this, that the Lord is behind the words you speak, and he's calling people back, saying, come on home. Get back home. Come to know me in my goodness. Come to know me in my faithfulness. Come to know me in who I am. I love you. I'm out for you. I want you. Know that he's doing that. And so this is what you and I are a part of. So now for you and I, so I've just said, Lord, build in us. Well, we just read the three things. Lord, build in us. Build in me the culture of heaven. Build in me the love of God. I want to grow. I want to advance in that. Lord, build in me, train me up to flow in the lifestyle of how heaven operates. God isn't Canadian. You won't see it in heaven and God's watching the commercial. I am Canadian. That's not in his commercial site. God is God. He doesn't think that way. So for you and I, we can't think Canadian. There's nothing wrong with it, but that's not who we are. We are first citizens of heaven. So we've been called into a relationship to think like him. So, Lord, build in us the lifestyle of heaven. Build in us the culture of heaven. And then thirdly, Lord, build in us how to flow with heaven in these last days. Listen, church, it is so crucial that we walk closely with him in these last days. Because we know it's dark out there. You don't have to look long to see it. But there is a flow in the world. But so there's also a flow with the spirit of God. There's a flow to how he wants to move. So we're catching him. We're catching the wind on him. Amen? Okay. So this morning, we start with the culture of heaven. Why the culture of heaven? Why do we need to emphasize that part? Because without the culture of heaven, it makes the lifestyle lifestyle of heaven flow and makes heaven work. Why the culture of heaven? It's to make the lifestyle and the flow of heaven work in our lives. So it all stems down to the culture, understanding how it ticks. Anybody ever been to different, you know, maybe you've been to another person's house and there's a different culture in that house. Anybody walk into a place like that before, right? Anybody even different eat cultural foods, right? That's what I'm talking about. Man, that Filipino food, we got some Filipinos in the house there. I'll tell you what, man, that's what I'm talking about. I think that should be part of the marriage supper of the lamb. That is going to be spring rolls from heaven. I say something about it, man. They're delicious. But it's also now understanding and grasping the culture of heaven. And what is the culture of heaven? Love. And in order to grasp the culture of the place, you have to experience it. You can't just teach culture, it has to be caught. And so this is why you've been brought into the kingdom of God's dear son, is now to learn how heaven operates. 
What's the culture? What's the feel? I mean, you could go to many different places, and you can feel a different culture in the room. The culture is not the stuff that you necessarily can see. It's how does it feel? And what we want, I mean, even as a church family, those big, you know, three words or three lines up there, you belong here, is not just supposed to be, we say you belong here. It's supposed to be felt. I'm looking for somebody, looking for a family. It's supposed to be felt. It's supposed to not just be felt, but then experienced in your life. So with heaven, the love of God, as I said, is not just head knowledge. It's to be experienced daily. So God didn't just talk culture from heaven. He demonstrated it. God demonstrated what heaven is all about, what it's like. Now, again, I want to preface this, but whenever you talk about the love of God, the dangerous thing is to kind of check out because I've heard that before. I've, I've, you know, there was one time I've, you know, people say it. I use it all the time. God loves you. 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 But when you stop and think about it, this love is what changed your life. This love is why you're sitting in the room today is because God loves me. So I never want to get too old or too educated that I don't stop, remember, live in, and celebrate that I am loved. I am, First John uses this word regularly, I am the beloved. That's who I am. That's my identity. Who are you, Joel? I am the beloved son of God. Who are you? I'm beloved. Now, I want to just share a quick testimony, you know, or... Before I go this, you can, you can tell when people grasp the love of God because, I mean, just as an example, if you're worrying about your life, if there's concerns or worry that you carry, you're doubting God's love for you. So what do we need? We have to get a total revelation of the love of God. Well, how do I know that this is going to turn out for my good? Because I know that I'm loved by God. And I want to just share with you a quick testimony. I heard this. That there was a, a psych ward. This is down in the States. And it was for very severe cases. And uh, so um, the gentleman that was sharing this, he wasn't, uh, wasn't a pastor leader. He was just a believer that worked in that psych ward. And they had done everything they could, the counseling, the sessions, everything that they possibly could. I'm talking not like severe cases where they have to, you know, buckle guys in. It's, 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 in, it's, it's insane. It's completely demonic. And there was nothing working in those, in those meetings. And so this, this Christian guy that's working in there, Lord, I don't know what to do. And so what he started doing, this thought came to him. He just started sitting in a room, and he started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And he just was, for the first couple of days, he was in there by himself. And then the next little bit, he was kind of sitting in a big hall, and a few people joined him, and they would just start singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You want to know what happened in that place? Something weird started happening. People started getting discharged. And they started asking, what did you do? His response was, nothing. I just started talking and thinking about and getting these guys. To, they, I mean, they couldn't understand it with their brain, but their hearts picked it up. Jesus loves me. I may not know much, but this I do know. Jesus loves me. Come on, just shout those words out. Jesus loves me. Woo, I tell you. There's something about that knowing. This is what I do know. How do I know what's going to work out? Because Jesus loves me. How do you know he's going to heal your body? Because Jesus loves me. How do you know you're going to be able to pay rent? Because Jesus loves me. This I know. How do you know that? The Bible told me so. This is the foundation of our Christian life. It's thought on how much the Old Testament is all much you do for God. In the New Testament, Christianity begins with what God has done for you. 
So my stance is not from this place of I need to earn a certain love. My position with God is I'm as loved that I'll ever be today. It's not going to change tomorrow. God's not going to love me anymore, and he's not going to love me any less. It is the same yesterday, it's the same today, and it's the same tomorrow. So the point of the love of God is not that I've heard it before. It's do you trust and depend on it today? Because in a dark, dark world where all the systems that we've trusted and they start going out the window and not working anymore, who do we rely on? Who, where do we look? Where are we leaning on, church? We have to completely depend and rely on Jesus loves me. So again, let me encourage you, don't ever get too old spiritually. Don't get too many PhDs behind your name where you start going, well, you know, I've heard that all before. No, 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 no. Do you depend and rely on it today because it's the culture of heaven? What makes heaven heaven? You are so loved. That's how the Father sees you. That's how he thinks about you. That's why he talks about you. It's love, 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 love. My phone is filled with pictures of my children. Why? Because I love them. They're great. God's got a lot of space on his phone. And I tell you, brrr, he's got kids all through it. And there's a Joel section. There's a whole folder filled with Joel and nice pictures of me. And he goes, that's my boy. I love you, son. And that becomes the very foundation of my life, knowing that I'm loved by him. Can I get an uh-huh on that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so 1 John 4, 16, it says this, that we have come into an intimate, come on, say the next word with me, experience. We have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in his love that he has for us. God is love, and those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. So now again, the number one attack of the enemy is to try and convince you that God doesn't love you. That's his whole task, that's his whole focus in life, is he can get you to doubt the Father's love. And we'll probably get into this in, in time coming, but I tell you, you can actually read it in Deuteronomy chapter one, it says the Israelites, they rebelled against God going before just into the promised land. And why did they rebel? Deuteronomy 27, I believe it says, because they murmured it in their tents and they said, because God hates us, that's why we weren't able to go in there. So I'll tell you, this whole world is doing everything it can to point out that God hates people. That's the agenda. So if we're aware of what the enemy's trying to do, he's trying to get you not just to convince you. I mean, first of all, trialing the world that God hates you. And then for in the church, he actually uses his tools of shame, condemnation, and guilt to keep you in this place of doubting the love that the Father has for you. How does he do it? He'll bring up your past. He'll say things, do you think that's who you really are? Yeah, I'm sure you've read it that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but... Man, I know what you did last night, and you know what you did last night, and four other other people know what you did last night. I tell you, man, it's, gonna, it's hard to love that, because not only that, but your dad left with you when you were three. Like, he didn't like you either, and your mom had a hard time with you. She spanked you every moment she had an opportunity. So, yeah, you're no use to him. Bomb, 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 bomb. And what is he trying to get you to do? To doubt the Father's love for you, so that you start again to act out and start blaming a God and start blaming things on him that he is no author of, that he's got no hand in, and that's where confusion comes in. You know, Daniel eleven thirty two. I'm just kind of highlighting a few things, what we're getting into. But Daniel 32, it says, the people who know their God. Another way you could say is the people that know they are loved by God, what's the result? They'll be strong, and they'll do great exploits for God. It does God no good, no, it doesn't help his kingdom, his church advance in these last days when you are under condemnation, under shame, under guilt, under the torment of what you've done in your past. Why? Because if you don't carry out and know that you are deeply loved by God, knowing his character, know who he is, it's impossible to be strong. And we got Christians praying all over, oh God, make me strong, make me strong. God's going, come and know who I am. Come know the love that I have for you and watch the strength now just come from the inside of you. Because as a believer, on the Old Testament, the strength came upon Samson for a time and he'd slap a few Philistines around. But where does the strength from the church come? It comes from within. 
a confidence and boldness from within. And how do you get all that? By having insight, revelation, knowledge that I am loved. Come on, shout it out. Let Kentwood know I am loved. This is a loved church. It is. And so the culture of all of heaven is you are loved. Now again, what you see here, uh, the father, in order to establish his heart and to bring across his heart to a world that was stuck in darkness, to a Jewish nation that was wrapped up in law, and again, the power of the law is the beginning of sin. Not that the law is evil, the, the law is perfect, but nobody can level up to it. So you look at the Ten Commandments and you go, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. I'm useless to God. Yeah, spiritually speaking, you all was, we all was to him. So what did God do in order to break that darkness so that light can penetrate in? What did God do in order to establish and bring heaven, the culture of heaven, and invade a dark, legalistic, stuck world? Y'all, I'm going to just talk about my culture from heaven. I'm going to maybe put it in the sky once in a while. No, he gave his son, the son who perfectly resembles and is the perfect image of the Father God himself. So that Jesus, to the point, when you see me, Jesus said, you actually see the Father. And what's our assignment, church? That when the world sees us, what do they actually see? They see him. So the assignment hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. For 2,000 years, the message of the church has been the Father's love, the Father's care, the grace of God. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So what's this platform for? What are the platforms and all the children's thing for? What is the building downtown? What is the platform all used? To boldly proclaim and to shout as loud as we can, the Father loves you. Come back to God. That's our message. That's why we're here. And Jesus perfectly demonstrated that for us. And in Jesus' own words, let's quote Jesus, shall we? John chapter 3, verse 16. John didn't write this. Well, he did, but Jesus spoke it. Are you ready? Jesus speaking, for God. Who's he talking about? He's talking about his father. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him, what specifically? In his deep love. Man, it's his love for you. It's his deep love for you. You trust the love that the son has for you? Oh, man, that's a game changer. You'll stop being embarrassed about this Jesus when you realize that he hung on the cross for you, that he was beaten, completely stripped naked, hung on that cross in shame, and the devil tried to embarrass him as best as he could. Well, lasted for a few days, but on that third day, boo yah. Talk about some devil booty kicking time. And it's time to church do some devil booty kicking time. Run this devil out of town. Because why? He's supposed to be under our feet. He should know what the bottom of my foot looks like. Stop letting him up here. He's here. Don't bring him up. So God greatly loved, dearly prized his own. He gave his only son. So that whoever. Who's a whoever in the room? Woo-hoo-hoo. Come on, y'all. That's you. Whoever believes and trusts or relies on him as savior will not perish, but have eternal life. Now notice he says this, for God, Jesus' words again, God did not send me, his son, into the world to judge, to condemn the world, that is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world, come on y'all, the world, say with me, the world, the world might be saved through him. Verse 18, Whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal Savior and Lord, listen to these words, is not judged. Anybody here made that decision to trust in him as personal Savior and Lord? Here's the good news. When Jesus comes back, Hebrews 9, I think 32 tells us, He's not coming back to judge sin. He's coming to bring you up to a wedding feast. Your sin has already been judged on the cross of Calvary. It's already been done. That's the good news for you and I. 
Look in the brackets. It says, for this one, there is no judgment. Come on, church. Let's yell that out together. No judgment. What else? There's none. Where is it? He took it. He took it. Continuing one. But the one who does not believe and has decided to reject him as personal Savior and Lord, he is judged already. That one has been convicted and sentenced because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God, the one who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, and the one alone who can save him. And I'll tell you the good news for us, church. If you've called on the name of Jesus, guess what? You are in good place. You are in good hands. But now you have a message to proclaim for those that have not yet heard properly. Religion stinks. I want to put on the big, on the outside of the front door, just a big religion and about <clears throat> cancel. There is no religion allowed in this building. It stinks. It drives people away. But what draws people in? The goodness of God leads men and women into repentance. Amen? So that's what I wanted to share with you. Jesus loves me. This I know. I think that's all throughout your week. While you're driving and you hit a Starbucks parking lot or a drive through or all of a sudden you're finding your way in sport check. What am I doing? Jesus loves me. This I know. The Bible tells me so. So you don't have to get too deep in order for God to move on your behalf. Did you know that? Some of you think, oh, I just need to know more. No, no, no. You may not know much, but this I do know. Jesus loves me. And when you have a revelation of that, Jesus loves me, this I know, you are a rich person because that's what all of heaven operates on. So in this love, is not just to be talked about, it's to be experienced together as a family. You think about it. I mean, my mom, she always says, okay, I want all my children together. And then she got that, my, my other... My mom's mom, my Oma is here too. And remember as a, as a little boy going to their house for dinner or, you know, and every time, hey, we just wanted to leave the table and go do something. And my Oma, what would you say regularly? I like your company. It's fine. <laughs> so rather than go and playing, she would regularly say, no, boy, sit down. I've already eaten, Oma. I don't want any more. Yeah, but I like your company. So then we would sit, and then she would start up a whole conversation, you know, what's your favorite color? Anything to keep you seated at the table. Well, how much more your heavenly father, he loves your company. All of a sudden, you get off, and you're busy running, doing all these types of things. Stop and just go, oh, I'm loved right now. Oh, man, Lord, I, I'm loved. So when I walk into this place, favor follows me everywhere I go. That's, remember, remember Psalm 23? Surely your goodness and mercy, and it follows me everywhere I go. I tell you, you get some sweet deals when you start thinking that way. Oh, it always comes to you, yes, I'm the beloved son of God. You should be walking into, you know, winners this week and going, man, I'm a beloved son of God. People just throw clothes at you and say, have them, take them. All right. If the alarm goes off, that's their problem. I'm taking these clothes. They belong to me now. Just kidding, just kidding, I'm not. But church, this is who we are. When we get a glimpse and a realization of how deeply loved we are, guess what? It becomes easy now. We can become advocates or vessels of this same love towards who? Our brother and sister in the Lord. We find it easier to love the world, but we got to first love each other in this room. So if we're able to love the living daylights out of people in this room, I tell you, it'll make a statement to this city because it's not about the show. And not only that, you know what? This whole thing that we're doing, it's not even to reach more people. <sighs> What's it for? It's to be obedient to him. The foundation of this all is obedience. Lord, and he, what does he do? He'll bring the increase. He brings the people because people are looking for a place to belong. People are craving it. How do I know that? Because I got a 10-year-old son who thinks that way. And it comes up even at an early age. So that's why in the kids, you belong here. You absolutely do. And not just in this church building, but you belong in God's family. And that's why we're actually going to call up all of our kids. We're going to pray together as a church family. We're going to pray together as a church because this is who we are. But before those kids come up here and change the atmosphere of this room, which I love greatly, I just want to give an opportunity. If there's anybody in this room that you say, man, I haven't made Jesus the Lord of my life before. I haven't, I haven't made that decision 
I want to just encourage you right now. If we all, could we all stand up together anyway? The kids are going to be here in a moment. But if that's you saying, you know what, I want to make a decision for Jesus today. I want to ask you or invite you. Would you just throw up your hand because I can see you. But here, there's one awesome individual. Cool, man. Shane, is that you? It is you, man. Hey, bro. <laughs> I just met Shane this morning. Hello, Shane. Anybody else in this room that would like to do that this morning? I want to make sure. Awesome, another one. Cool, man. Great. Anybody else? I just want to make sure here. Anybody here? Anybody here? Man, awesome. I see another hand. Okay, I see another hand. Awesome. Awesome. I see another hand. Come on, man. Come on, church. Let's have this. Come on. What we're going to do is I want to, if, if you would be so bold, would you be comfortable? Just come run up here real quick. Hey, why? Would you come up running up here real quick? I want to just pray with you, real simple prayer. And you don't have to be embarrassed because all of us as a family, we've all done this. We've all done this at some point. We've all ran up here. Can we give these guys a hand? As they're, you're already right up here, man. Hello. What was your name? Austin. Austin. Nice to meet you, Austin. I'm Joel, man. Good to meet you, bro. Has Shay's mom. So we got Shane, Diane, Austin, sorry, one more time, and Jessica. And oh, hey, yeah, John, John, you did it. From Abbotsford. Not anymore. Not anymore. From Red Deer now. Come on now. <laughs> now we got five new siblings, now five new brothers and sisters here. So what's so beautiful, it's not a religious thing, it's not a I have to do something in order to get blessed or in order to be received by God. It's he's already received you. You're simply accepting what Jesus has done for you. So the Bible tells us if you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Bible says you are saved. Oh, man, what a beautiful thing. It, it requires nothing. It's the Father's love for you. Again, Christianity is not something that you do for God. It's something that he initiates and you simply respond to that. So what we're going to do, and we're all going to pray it, but if you wouldn't mind just closing your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. Just hold them real high and just say this. I'm going to get you to repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe with all my heart that Jesus died and he rose again. I give you my heart. Here's my life. And I invite you to be my Savior, to be my Lord, this day, November 19th, in Jesus' name, I renounce the past, the sin is gone, it's behind me, I declare that I am in right standing with my Father because of Jesus. Thank you for rescuing me today, in Jesus' name. What we'll do is with, with these, I know um, Robert will be here, but we have a couple things that we want to give you right after the service. So there's that right outside this door. This is new to all of us. But right outside that door, in the first door, when you go out these doors to the right, there's a little room there. We want got some packages that we just want to give you to, what just happened here? What did I just do in front of people? And so that'll give you some information. But we want to pray with you. God bless you. Welcome to our family. You belong here. We love you dearly. That's awesome. Maybe see it. Can we give them one more hand? Amen. Well, like Pastor Joel said, we wanted to pray and have our, the, hope they don't mind me saying this, the grandparents of the church, the initiators of the church. We wanted to have Pastor John and Ingrid to come on up here and just pray as a family, but it, we don't want to pray as a family and have like a quarter of our family missing. So we wanted all of our kids, we left the babies in the in Babyville. Come on up guys. Make another row. Come on up. Can we welcome them as they come? Kids, we love you. We're so glad they're joining us. Keep going guys. We got more. You guys can come on up in the front here. 
Now, if you are not already serving in children's ministry, I tell you, when you take a look at these guys, are you not wanting to serve in kids' ministry? We've got the best kids in all of Red Deer. Woohoo! All right, you little ones, come on up in the front here. Here they come. All right. Well, as we get ready, Pastor John and Inger, can you guys come on up in the front? want to just take a moment. Can we all pray together? Kids, are we cool we can pray together? Awesome. So Pastor John and Inger, would you guys just take a moment? Yeah, would you come and we'll just pray for the church family? And what we'll do is we'll just extend our hands and we'll just receive everything that God wants for us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, we commit ourselves to you first and foremost because you told us in your word that that we are to present our bodies before you as a living sacrifice. We dedicate ourselves as people before you, first and foremost. We thank you so much for what you have done. Look what the Lord has done. We are so thankful and appreciative of who you are and what you have done. We dedicate this entire new building for your purposes, for your glory, and we thank you that many will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Many will turn from darkness to light, from having nothing to an inheritance that has been paid for. We praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that many will receive healing and restoration in their family, in their finances, in, uh, in all the things that you have given to us, the promises of God, which are yes, and amen. We dedicate ourselves in such a way that we are the people of God, called out of darkness, called out of shame, and into your marvelous light. In Jesus' name. Dear Father, we thank you. Our hearts, Lord, are full of all the things that you have done for us. How faithful you have been through all the generations. How good you have been in our lives, Lord. Thank you for all the good things you have in store for us, all the good things that are yet to come. Father, we stand before you as Impact Church, Impact Life Church, Father, we stand before you. And we say to you, Lord, we choose you. We choose your word. We choose your love. We choose the Holy Spirit to flow through us day after day, Father, and we step into the, the next things that you have for us with a faith, Lord, that is provided by you, but we choose it, Father. We choose it with our whole being. With our whole being, and we choose you, Lord. We thank you for provision. We thank you for wisdom. And just, Lord, our hearts are always tuned unto you, Father. As the family that we have here, Lord, how good, how faithful you are. And all of us, Lord, we... We just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, in the mighty name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? Just what can I just say this real quick? This does not just happen. Amen. This does not just happen. It's all founded on the Word of God. I remember many, many years ago that my dad, he came home and he told us kids, we're Christians now. I didn't, I thought we already were. <laughs> but, you know, something happened. That night, you know, when he was struggling with his business, he turned to the Lord. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe, you know, that what he, that, that choice that he made that night did not just impact him, did not just impact his, my, my mom who's here as well, did not just impact his kids, did not just impact the grandkids or the great-grandkids. It impacts everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Well, kids, you're going to head back this way with your with your teachers so that parents will pick them up in their classrooms. And you can just be seated for one moment longer. Um, part of our service is that we always worship the Lord with our mouths, with our words, and we always worship him with our finances. So right now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings with all these wonderful people this way. Everyone say, see you guys. Have a good time going back to your class before you get picked up. <laughs> Well, they're way cuter than me, so you can watch them while I share this scripture. In a moment, um, we just have one last um, fact to show you on the screen, and that's going to be how many people contributed to our legacy offering. Love you. Um, to help make this come to pass. But before that, I want to um, share something that David said, or something about David. We know that David was a man after God's own heart. And in 1 Chronicles um, 29, in verse 3, this is him talking. You know that David wanted to pay for the tabernacle. He wanted to pay for God's house. Isn't that an incredible desire? You don't have to raise your hand, but who here has just had that desire? I want to pay for the house of God. I want to make a house for the Lord. I know Joel and I have um, goals in our giving, and we've been inching towards them. There's a certain amount we want to sow one day into someone's life, into a ministry, into a church. It's good to have these goals. And this is what David said. He said, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver. Now I want to show you on the screen this morning um, how this place came to be. In, you can see that's a three-year period. Over 426 families contributed to make this house happen. That was $744,717.14. Now, if, you're, if you don't know us, you might be thinking, well, well, why do we need to give money? And why this? Hey, I'm not God. You're not God. This is the way he set it up. Amen? Aren't you so happy that the Lord said, I'm going to prosper my people, and then I'm going to have them sow into my house, and that's what's going to be used to reach people for Jesus. Aren't you thankful that's how he works? So we want to celebrate that this morning, that 426 families, that's a lot of families, contributed that money to make this happen. And so this morning, when we give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, we're doing it in a celebratory way. Lord, we want to honor you. We're, we're thankful for the opportunity to sow into your house. Amen. So if you're visiting us today, this is something we do to honor the Lord, and there's no pressure to give. Um, if you are giving of your tithes and your finances this morning, um, you do it the same as we did in the other building. You can do it online. Um, you can do it at the offering area or the giving area thereafter, but I'm going to pray and then the ushers are going to come around. Father God, we just hold out our offering to you, Father, our financial offering to you. Lord, everything we have is because of you. And so, Lord, we give back a portion, sowing it into your house, into your good ground, with an attitude of thankfulness this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to participate with you, to impact generations for Jesus. And we say this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ashers, you can go ahead. Hey, hey, so it's been decided that it's all good to bring your coffee into the sanctuary. However, as you now see beneath your feet, there is carpet. So in running the risk of telling adults what they can and can't do, we simply ask that you be very mindful of where that half cup of coffee is. Honestly, it might be best not to place it on the carpet. And if you can be so kind to take your garbage out at the end of the service, that would be amazing. Thanks for being awesome, Impact Family. This coming Wednesday at Impact Youth is going to be awesome. Junior youth, we are going to continue our talk on identity. Knowing where we come from helps us where we need to go. And for senior youth, heads up and invite your friends out because this week we have Dave Hartnell coming to speak to you and you will not want to miss this. It all starts at 7 p.m. at the Impact Center, which is our original building. So we'll see you there. We love kids at Impact. During the message, if you have little ones, please ensure they are in their class, nursery, or with you in the 
Connect Lounge. We also have a nursing mom's room for you to utilize. Every Thursday afternoon at 1.30, our seniors also meet at our original building, the Impact Center. Join us for fun, coffee and treats, testimonies, sing-alongs, the word, and a caring group. Awesome. Well, just a couple of things before we head out. Just wanted to say, if you're new, visiting, recently connected with us, I know I met some of you before the service even started, but if you'd be so kind to fill out a Connect card in the seat pocket in front of you, we, we would love to get that from you. My wife, Kyla, will be at information after the service. We have a gift for you. That gift is a, a mug, which is great, a pen, some gum, which is always helpful. Um, but there's a Discover Impact Life Church booklet in there, and we really want to get that in your hands so you can learn about the heartbeat of Impact Life Church. And so if you'd be so kind to fill that out. Plus, when you fill that out, we get your email, and uh, then we send you pertinent information about what's happening in and through the life of the church, as well as you'll get the uh, notes from the previous sermon so you can encourage yourself with those throughout the week. So if you'd be so kind to do that. I know, as I said, some of you already did um, kind of connect with me, but we do have a gift, so we'd still love for you to go um, to information right after the service. We also wanted to let you know that there are a few people here that would love to pray for you after the service. There's Jim and Connie and Pastor Marlene and Cheryl. So if you want to receive prayer after the service, um, we would love to come alongside you. So that will take place um, when I head off the stage. And then also, um, if you came forward just when Pastor Joel gave that altar call to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we do have some packages that we'd like to give to you. And so uh, immediately following the service, if you can go out the, the main doors and then head to your right, there's a next steps room. And I would love to be able to give you that package uh, that will be helpful for you in your journey with the Lord. And then finally, uh, you know what, we've been able to enjoy this space this morning, but why don't you take a bit more time after the service just to check some areas out. Maybe if you see somebody that you know was, was serving and giving of their time, maybe take, take a few moments just to thank them. And then ultimately, um, it would just be great to get to know the space and uh, just enjoy that together. Yeah? So that's it from me. So thank you for coming this morning. We want you to always remember that you belong here, and we will see you throughout the week. <laughs>